Finally, some words on model comparison in the estimation of spatial models. This applies equally well to the other estimation methods that we'll cover later. Basically, the problem is that the traditional measures of fit, such as an R-square, are not appropriate when spatial dependence is present. And the main reason for this is that the R-square, as a measure of fit and as an, a measure of explained variance of the model, is based on a simple, unweighted sum of squared residuals. Now, in the case of spatial correlation, this would give equal weight to each residual and doesn't compensate for the fact that the residuals are correlated more so than they would be by construction and that there may be uh, induced heteroscedasticity. As, as we, we saw in the discussion of the spatial uh, autoregressive structures, those structures induce heteroscedasticity, even though one may start out with a model that has no heteroscedasticity. So, as in the case of heteroscedasticity, um, simple R-square is not appropriate because it gives equal weight to residuals that correspond to errors with a large variance and errors with a small variance. So, that's the use of the unweighted sum is therefore not appropriate. Instead, one uses a measure called a pseudo R-square, which is uh, an ad hoc measure of fit based on the square correlation between the observed values and the predicted values. So we take the observed dependent variable Y, we look at its predicted values by the model, and we square the correlation. This gives some sense of how well the model uh, fits the observations, but it's not perfect. <clears throat> it's not at all um, explained variance, but it's a, a, a relatively reliable measure of relative fit between models. The problem with the spatial lag model, of course, is that it's not at all clear what the predicted value should be. Uh, if you recall, the spatial lag model has the spatially lag dependent variable on the right hand side. So we can't just plug in the estimate of rho and multiply that by the spatially lag dependent variable because the dependent variables should be the result of the prediction. So therefore for the lag model we should actually base the prediction on the reduced form which only has the covariance x on the right hand side and so no spatially lag dependent variable. And, and that is the complication because, as we've seen earlier, the reduced form involves the inverse of a matrix I minus rho W, which is of the size of the number of observations. So that's not an easy thing to do, but it is uh, one way to get a measure of it. Now, in the maximum likelihood context, we have something that is similar to, the, to a measure of fit. It's not exactly a measure of fit, but it gives us a sense of how well the objective function is achieved. If you recall that the likelihood function is nothing but the joint probability of the observations, so the higher the joint probability, the better. So the maximized value of the log likelihood function, the, the uh, what is a, the result of the optimization present process is a measure of relative model fit and re relative model adequacy, especially when it pertains to the same dependent variable. Because in, in a sense, we are maximizing the joint probability for that dependent variable. So the set of parameter values that give us the highest value would give us the highest joint probability and therefore would be best. Now, the aspect to keep in mind is that these maximized log likelihood are often negative values. So the best log likelihood, the highest value, is often the least negative. And so it's actually the smallest value in absolute value. Uh, one, the log likelihood is negative, that is. Uh, just like the R-square is 
a, an imperfect measure of fit in the sense that as you increase the number of explanatory variables, your model fit will increase, will get better. So you can load them up and it keeps increasing, hence the use of the concept of an adjusted R-squared, which applies a correction factor to the crude R-squared. In maximum likelihood estimation, we have a similar concept in the form of the notion of an information criterion or information criteria. There are actually several out there. Uh, uh, probably the best known is the Akaiki information criterion or AIC. You have also a Bayesian information criterion, BIC, and Schwartz information criterion, SC, and there, there are a number of others as well. The idea behind these criteria is the same for all of them. It's the same idea as behind the adjusted R-square. You take the original value for the criterion and you adjust it by some penalty for the number of variables included. So the idea is that everything, everything else being the same, the model with fewer explanatory variables is a better model if it has the same fit. So for the AIC, this takes the form of the negative twice the log likelihood minus two times the number of explanatory variables. And the smallest AIC value is the best. And as with the comparison of the log likelihood, um, we have to keep in mind that this is only relative. The values as such are not meaningful. There is no such thing as a significant difference between information criteria. It is a way to correct for variable number of explanatory variables to compare different variable, different models. So in, in our case, um, we might want to look at the extent to which the AIC changes from a model that has no spatial parameters to a model that includes spatial parameters. So the bottom line for model comparison of spatial models, the traditional interpretation of the R-square as explained variance is incorrect, is invalid. So we replace it by a similar notion, the notion of a pseudo R-square, which is the squared correlation between the observed values and the predicted values. For the spatial lag model, there's an additional wrinkle there in that we have to use the reduced form to get the predicted values, which complicates matters a little bit. In When we use likelihood as maximum likelihood estimation, we can use the maximized value of the log likelihood as a model fit criterion, even though technically it's not really fit. But generally speaking, for the same dependent variable, the model with the highest log likelihood is the best. And then similar to an adjusted R-square notion, we can correct the maximized likelihood by some penalty function for the number of parameters included in the model, which leads to various information criteria. And here, the smallest value of the information criterion is the best. So this concludes our discussion of a maximum likelihood estimation of the spatial models.